bringing guests on through Skype, yep. particularly when you're using something like a Wirecast or an OBS or whatever, can be challenging for people. You've you've got to grab the video. You've got to uh, you know route the audio correctly right, and a right. lot of different mm-hmm. things. Talk about how the new platform changes the game for people who want to use Skype to bring in interviews to those to those platforms. Sure. So in the past, if you want to do any kind of bringing Skype into one of these kinds of programs, there was a, it was a complex setup of going through and doing screen scraping uh, in order to get the video part of it. And then people, if anything on your screen moved, if you had more than one guest and they moved, it would become a problem and an issue. So what we've introduced, we introduced about maybe maybe a month and a half, two months ago, is the ability for you to do NDI out from Skype. And so what that means is all of the incoming video feeds that are that are happening. So if you're on a group call and you got like two people with you, their video feeds, we now expose those video feeds directly over NDI for usage in whatever it is that whatever tool accepts NDI that you're using. Now, um, can you explain real quick what NDI is? Uh, there we go. Can you explain <laughs> real quick what NDI is for people who might not be familiar with it? Sure. Uh, NDI is it's, it's a feature that was built. It's a, like a protocol that was built by a company called New Tech. Mm-hmm. And um, if you think about any kind of classic kind of studio setup, you would have an SDI cable, right? Connecting one piece of equipment, one video piece of equipment to another. So maybe out of the back of a highly professional camera, you've got an SDI cable coming out into your mixer or something like that, right? So you take off the S, put on an N for network. And mm-hmm. what it means now is that you can throw video and audio signals around your local network for pickup by either hardware or software that supports NDI. Okay. Now, uh, just a quick question from the chat while we're on the, the NDI mm-hmm. and Skype. Uh, John Preto asks, how does this affect Skype TX if you're using one of the TX machines? John, okay, excellent. Glad to hear. <laughs> glad to hear someone's talking about some TX stuff too. Great. Uh, I, I'm also the, the the product manager for TX, so uh, much love to you for even knowing what that product is, right? So for those of you who don't know, Skype TX is actually our studio professional uh, version of Skype. That is an actual box that you a rack box that you put into your studio, and then you can do individual channels out over SDI, right? Um, so it, basically what we've taken is we've taken some of that hardware capability there um, in order to get the individual signals, and we've put that into the client consumer version of Skype. Now, obviously there's a distinct difference between the use case of a professional studio that would use the Skype TX, where uh, there's some upscaling involved in the hardware, some additional features as far as controlling the calls and uh, controlling the signal flow in that way. Uh, But basically it's actually very similar in that we've taken the ability now to get some of those individual feeds out in the consumer version of Skype. So if you have Skype on your desktop uh, Mm -hmm. and you have the the traditional desktop version, so not the one from the Microsoft Store, not the UWP version, but the one you would download from the website. Everyone has the NDI feature available right now. Now, one thing I learned when I was testing it out is you have to turn NDI on before you call, not after you call, because I kept figuring, why isn't this working? I I did everything it said in the instruction. I didn't turn it on before I made the call. So that's that's something that I, I discovered. Um, Gorda has a question. He says, will it be easy to bring in multiple guests uh, when you're using OBS? Yeah, so Skype, it would be perfect for it, right? So um, if you're on three or four people on your call, all, again, all those individual, all those video calls that are coming in, they show up as individual NDI streams for OBS. So the video streams are individual. Um, the audio, it currently is one grouped audio. Um, currently, I'll just say currently, uh, but the, uh, the each video stream is individual, so you can set up each one individual as as a source. It's 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 the equivalent of of setting up uh, your own webcam right. in OBS, but it's someone else's, right? And and OBS sees it just as their feed. Um, Coach Jenny asks PC and Mac. I guess any computer that can run Skype and and uh, uh, the video production software, right? So it could it's be on PC. One. It's on Macs. It is not on Linux. Um, okay. If you guys want it on Linux, uh, I would say go to our user voice, Skype.uservoice.com, and just tell us that you want it on Linux. Um, uh, Gord asks uh, Aaron, um, how is bandwidth usage affected via the NDI solution compared to when it was an NDI? 
Um, so it is the same bandwidth consumption uh, as before, uh, as far as bringing it down to your computer. So mm -hmm. we actually are exposing the same exact video feed that the Skype client gets from, from the internet. Right. We're just taking and exposing that as a full feed, a full frame feed out over NDI. Now you may get some congestion if you're doing all kinds of stuff on your local network, uh, but I wouldn't think that your local network should be affected unless you're doing like a bunch of other stuff at the same time. Right, right. Now, one of the things that people would often recommend is running Skype on a separate computer if you can if you can do that, mm -hmm. um, just because you're sending video, uh, you're sending a stream out, you you sure. you know you've got a lot of different things going on there. Do you recommend that as a best practice for NDI as well? It can be. Um, it's the same thing. So it's going to be the same thing that you would have had before. If you if you're concerned about how much processing power Skype in general takes up, mm -hmm. uh, then sure, run it on another machine. And again, if you're connected over the local network, NDI is picked up either on your same computer or it can be picked up on the local network. So it's going to have, be very much the same experience either way. So then you would either be bringing it in on your Wi-Fi network or you would be bringing it in through an Ethernet connection from one. I would always recommend an Ethernet connection. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. I figured that. But just to understand it, I mentioned the Wi-Fi first. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. I mean, sure, it's doable, but I, I let's let's go wired. If, if we're trying to be professional here, let's, let's go. Wired. Right. Right. So you're going from one Ethernet port to the other. Yeah. Um, and and then do you set um, it, it just to fully work through this if you're using an external computer do you set uh how do you set it so that it knows to send the video <laughs> like how do you ask for the video to go from one computer or one thing to another from one app uh, to another and so long as you're on the same local network it just works. That's the that's actually the beauty right. of NDI. That's one of the reasons that we chose to support uh, NDI and use it in this way. It, for years, it's been this question of how do we do this the right way and what is the right mechanism to make it easy for everyone. As of right now, uh, NDI is in a number of hardware devices, but more importantly for streamers and content creators, it's, uh, it's, it's natively supported by Streamlabs. It's natively supported by Wirecast. It's natively supported by XSplit. Uh, OBS, there's a plugin you have to download and boom, it works, right? And right. it works exactly like I just said. Like if you've got, if, if I've got NDI turned on during a Skype call, then mm -hmm. any other thing that's on the same network that can receive NDI will just see that feed and you'll be able to grab it right away. Okay. So now if I'm doing a show like this one where I have multiple guests, each coming in their own segment, mm -hmm. um, and I want to use Skype to bring in those guests, say to a Wirecast or an OBS, um, I guess I would need to get everybody on the line before the show starts. Right. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. and then, um, it, Skype, like, let's say I have a call where I get everybody on through one Skype account, right? Do I make mm -hmm. multiple calls or do I do a group call? Like, how do I get three guests on my my Skype so that I can bring them in through NDI one after the next? Well, that's kind of up to you, right? Mm -hmm. So the, 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 the setup process is, of it is at some point mm -hmm. before your show, you're going to want to make a call with that person. Right. And then go ahead and set the source for NDI. Right. Their source will always be the same because the source is named, um, it's named uh, your computer name, then Skype, and then their Skype profile name. Okay. Right. So you just need to grab that name as the source and get it into OBS or Wirecast or whatever you're using. Mm -hmm. You can save that source in there and then flip back and forth in the future. So then, if you're on a group call or if you're on an individual call with that person, whenever you're on a call with them from then on and you have NDI turned on, that source will light up for you. Oh, okay. So your yeah. specific username becomes the source? Yes. Mm -hmm. So if I go to pick NDI, I can pick you or I could have picked Eileen or I could have picked Kim when mm -hmm. I'm ready to bring that guest on. And I could have an individual shot set up for each of you so that it's, it's not an awkward transition. Exactly. Yes. And you mm -hmm. all need to be on the line at the same time, though, for me to add that. No, not at the same time necessarily. So you so have we to could just do, we could actually do sort of what we did here, where you drop like we we chat for a few minutes before the show, and then I say come back on five minutes before your segment. I could do the same thing, create yep. the shot, and then bring and then you come back on like close to your segment, and I can go from one guest 
to myself to then to you, and it all could be seamless. Absolutely. And and probably, so if we're trying to like just solve the easiest way to do this, right? Uh, a group call would be the easiest thing to do um, because if you set up like a group chat, so in Skype, you, if you if you create a group chat, you can actually go into the group chat and you can uh, create a link to send to everyone. Mm -hmm. And then you send everyone that link, they know, and you could say that this is for what's today, the 13th, right? So you can right. say this is the group chat for December 13th. And then they can all join that chat. And then you can, you can start now, uh, you, you can do a, uh, you can start a call without actually calling people. Right. So you can start a call, you do uh, go slash go live, it turns on your video, and then anyone else that's in that group chat can just join the call. They don't get ringed, you know, they don't get called, right. they, they join when they want to join. And then all of a sudden those NDI things will light right up for you. Yeah, because I know that was an issue um, with Ecamm, which relied on Skype, that you like, if you wanted to take a call during the show, there'd literally be like the call going on and all of a sudden the person drops in live into the show. So now with oh, this, yeah. you can mm -hmm. do the, you can transition people in. Absolutely. In Cause it's, because it's their individual feed that you're, that you're putting into OBS. Wow. Mm -hmm. So this is really powerful beyond what I, what I even understood uh, before <laughs> you know, now. So, it, it, you know, kudos to my team, right? right. The, the the dev work that's gone into this to make this as robust as it is has been months of work, and it's it's hidden. The, the the amount of work is hidden by how simple it works, right? In the UI for Skype, it's literally just a toggle. It's a humble little switch. But right. a humble little switch turns on literally months of work and some work that uh, will be coming soon to you, maybe early January. That will make even some more features for it. So hmm. yeah, maybe we'll come back on in January. Do you want to break any about. news right now? <laughs> What's uh, coming? We, you know, uh, again, we, you know, we worked. Uh, we launched this about a, about a month and a half, two months ago, and um, some of the requests that we got are: uh, uh, How do I get my own personal feed? Right, uh, right. From NDI, we've gotten some questions about screen sharing. Is that going to be supported in the future? Those are good, interesting questions, but I can't confirm anything right now. Um, JS Gilbert asks, why is the TX license so expensive? Yeah, it's not. Uh, so you're actually buying hardware. Uh, uh, so that's what it is. So TX is actually about buying the hardware. And so we partner with manufacturers in order to uh, provide them with the, the specialized software. And then whether or not it's expensive is based upon the components in the hardware itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so now this is an option using NDI also, not just for live or for live to tape kind of recorded uh, interviews and things, but you can use this with pro with podcasting services as well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Anything that takes NDI. So, um, you know, I know Avid uh, products take NDI in. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there currently is not uh, an Adobe NDI solution, but maybe that'll come in the future. Let, and, you know, let Adobe know you want it, right? Right. Um, right. So any tool that takes NDI, you, you've, you've got a solution right there. Uh, Gord has a question about Zencaster. Do you know if Zencaster works with? Uh, I, you know, I don't know. I, I'm unfamiliar with Zencaster. Tell me, tell me more so about I'm, Zencaster. It's it, it it allows, I believe, multiple recordings. So, okay. you know, so recording will be on your desktop. There'll be a recording on the other part, like oh, know, like, a, like a double internet thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like uh, redundancy, so that somewhere along the line, if things get lost, I'm not totally positive. Uh, so, you know, that's a good question in the sense of um, what are some things uh, I, I would love to throw back to your community, right? Mm -hmm. What are some things that, that they would want to see? I've gotten this question, not about Zencaster per se, but about having a double ender, right? Um, right. Uh, where, where, and what, what we mean by that is um, if we're on this call, we both record our local audio and then we get that sync that up in, in the future, right? Right, right. Um, and so uh, if that's something that people are wanting, I'm very, very open to those suggestions. One of the great things about working at Microsoft is uh, I literally don't get to do anything unless people ask for it, right? As a product manager, I have to have people asking, hey, what is it that we, what, what is it, that this is what we want, right? People have to say, this is what I want. And then I'd be like, oh, okay, good. Now I can build that for you. But if I don't hear this is what I want, then, then I, I'm, you know, I can't build anything for you. I'm going to pick out the rest of Gord's question that isn't specific to Zencaster because this could be of interest 
uh, across the board, and that is, are you getting one consolidated audio feed or separate feed? So if you have several guests in conversation, is each one uh, having their own feed go into the podcast app or into Wirecast, OBS, whatever you're using? At present, uh, it is only one consolidated feed. Okay. I will say that this is the top requested feature that we've had is to make them not consolidated. Um, and I'll leave it at that. Okay. Now is, if I'm using say Wirecast and is my, is my mic coming from that consolidated feed or I'm just going straight from my mic into Wirecast? At present, uh, when we have the NDI, it is all the income is consolidated feed of the incoming feeds. Okay. So, so you'll you'll be able to control your own mic, have your own mic separate, right? And then, uh, but everyone else's feed that's coming in, that's one consolidated audio feed. Okay. So if I had uh, three shots set up and I had mm -hmm. guests one, two, and three, and I'm talking to guests three now, um, I can't turn off the audio of guests one and two and still hear you. In Skype, you could mute them. I can mute them in Skype. Mm-hmm. Okay, and and you would still come in, so you do have control. Uh, but if you wanted like multi-track recording and record each one individually or something, that you wouldn't be able to do at this time. Correct. But Correct. that's a very requested feature. It's a very requested feature, and um, we're working hard to make uh, a solution there. 